Uh, thank you, Piers, and uh, thanks uh, for the organizers for the uh, invitation, and uh, thanks for giving me so many time. Uh, the title just means that uh, an overview of Goddard's incomplete theorem. Okay, uh, this is an outline. I will talk about uh, the original and the modern versions of Goddard's incomplete theorems, the influence of Goddard's theorems, uh, different proof of Goddard's theorems, and the generalization of Goddard's theorems. Uh, also, uh, the intentionality problem of G2. And finally, I will talk about the limit of the applicability of G1. Okay, uh, 19 years ago, uh, Goddard proved his first incomplete theorem uh, in this famous paper. His theorem is based on uh, one system uh, in uh, Russell White has this famous book and just called this system P. In fact, this system is kind of complex and uh, uh, some simple theory of types. In his theorem, he used the notion of omega consistence. We see that a theorem T is omega consistent. Just means that there is no formula phi x such that uh, for any n, T proves that uh, negation phi n bar. And uh, T proves that there exists x phi x. Uh, the notion of omega consistent is stronger than consistence. So here, this is the Goddard's original version of his first incompleteness theorem. Uh, it says that uh, for any formal theorem T, a format in the language P, uh, obtained by adding a primitive recursive set of accents to P. Uh, if T is omega consistent, then T is incomplete. That means that uh, there is a sentence theta such that theta and the negation of theta are both not proved in T. And uh, this is the uh, Goddard's original second uh, incomplete theorem. Uh, let T uh, be the seminal uh, system. It is in the Latin language of P and is a primitive recursive extension of, of P. Uh, if T is consistent, then the consistence of T is not proved in T. Uh, in Goddard's uh, 19, uh, 31 paper has sketched a proof of second incomplete theorem without details. And he comments that uh, his G2 is a calorie of G1. In fact, it's a formalized version of G1. Okay, uh, now uh, I will talk about the modern version of Goddard's incomplete theorem. So uh, the modern version can be formulated with over some uh, weaker uh, system than PA. So here is the famous uh, Robinson arithmetic cube. So uh, this system is well known, so I will uh, skip the details. And the PA, uh, it just consists of accents Q1 plus Q2 and Q4 plus Q7. And uh, this induction scheming. Uh, in the research on the metamathematical, uh, Robinson theorem R is very important. Uh, this theorem uh, is in this language. Uh, it's a seminal the language of PA. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, but it has a primitive new binary predicate symbol. Uh, this is the accent scheme. Okay. Um, now I'm going to talk about some important property of Q and R. Uh, before this, first I introduced a definition. We see that a theorem T is locally finitely satisfiable if every finite subserum of T has a finite model. And this is uh, important theorem due to Albert Visa. Uh, it gives me a characterization of theorem which can be interpretable in R. Uh, suppose T is a theorem with a finite signature then T is locally finitely satisfiable if only if T is interpretable in R. Okay, now I give a summary of the basic property of Q and R since uh, this will be used in the following uh, slide. Uh, first, uh, we see a theorem T is essentially incomplete. Just means that uh, any consistent R extension of T is incomplete. Here is the some property of Q and R. Uh, Q is a very weak, uh, finitely axiomatized theorem, and the Robinson shows that uh, any theorem interpret Q is incomplete, and uh, so Q is essentially incomplete. Theorem R uh, is locally finitely satisfiable, and hence it's not finitely axiomatizable. 
the R is weaker than Q uh, respect to uh, interpretation uh, because Q is not interpretable in R. Um, in fact, uh, our recursive function are representable in R and also clearly we can know that uh, uh, this R is essentially incomplete. So both these two theorems are essentially incomplete. Now I'll give a modern version of Goddard's incomplete theorems. The hypothesis is that uh, let the T be a RE extension of PA, just a recursive enum enumerable extension of PA. Uh, the G1 says that uh, if T is omega consistent, then T is incomplete. Uh, G2 says that if T is consistent, then the consistence of T is not provable in T. And after Goddard, Rosser improves uh, Goddard's theorem in the sense that uh, uh, Goddard's uh, G1 or shown the hypothesis that the T is omega consistent, which is stronger than uh, T is consistent. And the Rosser proved G1 just assuming that T is a consistent R extension of R. Uh, if so, then T is incomplete. So in the following, I will freely use G1 and G2 to refer to both the Goddard's uh, G1 and G2 and uh, there are different uh, versions. Uh, to, we assume that uh, the meaning of G1 and G2 will be, be clear from the context when we, whenever we talk about them. Okay, uh, now I'll give a quick overview of the, uh, the idea of the proof of uh, uh, Goddard's G1. Uh, <laughs> not about G2 because he doesn't publish his proof of G2. Uh, the idea of Goddard's proof of G1 have three main components. One is arithmetization, uh, representability, and self-reference construction. So in the following, we next T be R extension of PA. Uh, under arithmetization, any formula of the theorem can be coded by a natural number and call it Goddard's number. So in this talk, I use this symbol to denote the Goddard number of phi, and I use this symbol to denote the numeral of the Goddard number of phi. Okay. Uh, under the automatization, any formula and any finite sequence of formulas can be coded by Goddard number. And then we can define some relations on uh, natural numbers with, with express the syntactical properties of T. For example, we can define this binary re relation. Uh, this means that uh, N is the Goddard number of a proof of the formula with Goddard number M in T. Uh, since T is R, it's R extension of PA, so we can show that uh, this uh, binary relation is R E. Uh, and then first, I introduce a notion of uh, representability. We see that an array relation is representable in T. That means that there's a formula of phi with n free variable, such that uh, uh, if M1, MN has this relation R, and then uh, this phi M1 bar, MN bar is provable in T. And if M1, Mn does not have the relation R, then uh, negation phi M1 bar Mn bar is provable in T. So this is well known. Uh, in the proof of G1, Goddard uses a very key fact that uh, every RE relation is representable in PA. So uh, we have shown that uh, uh, we have shown that uh, this binary relation is RE. So we have a formula which represents this binary relation. So we let this formula represent this relation. Okay, and then from this representation formula, we can define the probability predicate uh, PR of VTX as this way. Uh, we say X is provable in T, just means that uh, there is a Y, so the Y uh, is the code of a proof of the formula with code X. And then we can show that uh, uh, this uh, probability uh, predicate satisfies the following conditions. Uh, the first one see that uh, you find provable in T and uh, uh, phi is provable in T is provable in T. And uh, this is that you find provable and the phi implant preside provable and the preside provable. And this just see that uh, um, T can prove that if phi is provable and the phi is provable is provable in T. Uh, you, you know that uh, this is just the famous D1 and D3, uh, people the banners and the low developability condition. And the last step is the self-reference construction. Uh, Goddard constructed a Goddard sentence G, which asserts its own unprovability in T. Uh, his G has this property. 
in T, we can prove that G is equivalent to G is not a provable. And then Goethe shows that if T is consistent, then Goethe's sentence is not provable in T. Further, he shows that if T is omega consistent, then negation of G is not provable in T. Uh, so this step, he used a stronger assumption that T is omega consistent. Then uh, this is the uh, canonical way to uh, define the consistent statement. We say T is consistent, that means that uh, uh, the contradiction zero not equal to zero is not proven in T. And then from the above these three conditions of the probability predicate, we can show that uh, over T, consistent of T is equivalent to G. Uh, we have shown that if T is consistent, then good sentence is not proven in T. So we get a G2. If T is consistent, then consistent of T is not proven in T. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, this proof sketch is a standard in the <laughs> in the modern textbook. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's not uh, the same uh, original as the Goethe's. Uh, in fact, for Goethe's, he thinks that uh, uh, his G2 is just a category of G1. Uh, the reason that uh, in G1, he shows that uh, if T is consistent, then Goethe's sentence is not provable. And he said that these statements can be formalized over T. So in T, we can prove that uh, consider of T imply a good or sentence is not provable. But uh, we also know that uh, uh, the good or sentence is equivalent to uh, good or sentence is not provable in T. So we get that uh, in T, we can prove that uh, consider of T imply G. And then we know that uh, G is not provable in T. Uh, so we get that uh, consider of T is not provable in T. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, this one is the uh, is the is a modern uh, from the uh, formulation based on this uh, dividability condition D1 and the D3. Uh, now we we'll give some comment on G1 and G2. First, the G1 is constructive, which means that uh, given any consistent uh, R extension T of Q, we can effectively find a true pan pi one sentence GT such that uh, it is in, independent of T. Uh, for good proof, only assuming that T is consistent uh, is not sufficient. Uh, it's not sufficient to show that a good sentence is independent of T. Uh, to show this, we need to assume that uh, T is omega consistent. Uh, in fact, uh, this assumption is too strong. Uh, T is one, uh, one consistent, or T is sigma, uh, sigma zero one sound is also okay to prove that a good sentence is independent of T. Uh, now, uh, two comments about G2. Uh, uh, the consider of PA is not provable in PA, but uh, uh, for any finite sub theorem ACE of PA, a PA can prove the consistence of ACE. That's mean that PA can prove the consistence of any finite sub theorem of PA. Uh, finally, uh, for G2, we cannot get that uh, consider of T is independent of T uh, to show that uh, the negation of consider of T is not provable in T. We need to assume conditions stronger than T is consistent. Okay, uh, and now I talk about the standard probability predicate because I want to uh, later talk about the generalization of a good theorem. So, uh, without the state, otherwise, we also know that T is a consistent R extension of Q. We see that this formula PRTX is a probability predicate, just mean that uh, a phase proof in T, if only if uh, uh, <laughs> this one holds. And then we can define the canonical consistent statement, con T, as that uh, zero not equal zero is not provable in T. And uh, here's the uh, famous uh, here the Bernard's loop derivability conditions, uh, D1 and D3. Uh, so we have to talk about this, so I will skip this. And uh, uh, we see that uh, probability predicate PRTX is standard if it satisfies the condition uh, D2 and D3. Okay, so in the following, I will assume that uh, PRTX is a standard probability predicate, and the con T is a canonical consistent statement that defined as uh, contradiction is not a proof in T, a very standard pro probability predicate PRTX. Okay, in Goddard's proof, he also proved uh, a, a very important tool, uh, the diagonalization lemma. You see that for any formula with one free variable, there's a sentence theta. The theta is the fifth point of this phi. In fact, we can prove it in the weak theorem R. Also, it's an easy calorie of this diagonalization lemma. We can get the task is theorem on, on definability of truth. Uh, there's no uh, 
formula with one free variable, we can we can define the notion of truth. Also, they can can be done in the weak arithmetic R. Okay, here is the summary of the property of the truth truth state and the probability state. At least there's a set of formulas which is true in the standard model of arithmetic, and at least the set of formulas uh, which is provable in PA. And here's a summary of the property of this two set. This this proof set is definable in the standard model N of PA, but the true set is not definable in this standard model. Uh, both these two set are not recursive, are not represent representable in PA. Uh, this this proof set is arithmetic. In fact, it's a sigma one set, but the true set is not arithmetic because it's not definable in the standard model. Now I talk about the inf influence of Goodall's theorem. In fact, Goodall's theorem had a wide and a profound influence on foundation of mathematical uh, philosophy, uh, mathematical and computer science. Here, I just give a quick overview of uh, uh, its influence on this part. Uh, first, uh, uh, its influence on foundation of mathematical uh, it can be reflected in this aspect. First, it reveals the independent phenomena which is common in mathematical and logic. Uh, it shows the essential limitation of one given form of system. Uh, it reveals the essential difference between notion of probability in PA and the notion of a truth in a standard model. And uh, finally, uh, it uh, is a blow to the uh, Whitehead Russell's program for proving that all mathematical, or at least quite a lot of it, can be derived from the logic uh, in PM. Uh, so it is a blow to the uh, famous Russell's program of logicism. And finally, it had a profound influence on the Hilbert program. So there are a lot of uh, discussion about this influence, especially on the logicism and uh, the Hilbert program in the literature. So here I just an, uh, an give an overview. Now let's look at its influence on philosophy. Uh, after Gooder, uh, Gooder Stereo invoke uh, a wide and uh, long-standing discussion of some philosophical questions related to good or zero, especially about uh, uh, human intelligence and uh, uh, artificial intelligence and the limit of uh, of artificial intelligence. And then now I just talk about uh, two uh, important uh, philosophical questions closely related to good or zero. Uh, one is the mechanism season uh, thesis. Uh, mechanism thesis claims that the human mind cannot be mechanized. A popular uh, misinterpretation of Gordon's theory is that uh, Gordon's theory implies human mind cannot be mechanized. Uh, in a most straight way, this just means that the mathematical output of the idealized human mind outstrips the mathematical out outputs of any Turing machine. Uh, Lucas and Penrose argues for the anti-mechanism thesis, just means that the human mind cannot be mechanized based on the good theorem. Uh, their argument has been intensively discussed and carefully analyzed in the literature and are not accepted by most logicians and most philosophers, uh, even if not by, uh, uh, <laughs> it's not, uh, not accepted by all logicians and all philosophers. Now I talk about another uh, philosophical question in code with to Goddard's zero is Goddard's disjunction. Uh, what about Goddard's view? Uh, Goddard did not argue that his zero implies that uh, human mind cannot be mechanized. Instead, uh, he argued that his zero implies a weaker conclusion uh, called uh, Goddard's disjunction. Uh, Goddard's disjunction is a disjunctive uh, statement. Um, you see that uh, either the first disjunct hold or the second disjunct hold. So this is the statement of the first disjunct. You see that the man cannot be mechanized. The second disjunct says that uh, there are absolutely undecidable statements in the sense that uh, there are mathematical truths that cannot be proved by the idealized human mind. So good or disjunct dis distinction, uh, disjunction GD just say that uh, uh, if a human mind can be me mechanized, then there are absolutely undecidable statements uh, he thinks that from his incomplete theory, we can uh, derive this. Uh, but Gooder, he believes that the human mind cannot be mechanized, and the human mind is sufficiently powerful to capture our mathematical truths. But he thinks that he cannot give a convincing argument for them. Uh, for Gooder, GD is a mathematical established find of great philosophical interest, which follows from his incomplete theory. And uh, Peter uh, Kerner had proposed a uh, a formal system DTK and so that uh, uh, 
a GD is proven in GDK, and a Bush Lucas argument and a Penrose argument for the first distance fail in this system. And the first, the first distance and the second distance are all independent of GDK. So this is the, uh, the most uh, um, detailed and uh, uh, sophisticated analysis of uh, this question of the mechanism thesis and the good dis distinction uh, in logic uh, as far as I know. So, Okay, now I talk about the influence on uh, mathematicals. A uh, good proof uses the metal mathematical method, and the good sentence has no real mathematical content. A natural question of the good is can we find a true sentence not provable in PA uh, with real mathematical content? Have a Friedman proposed a research program and concrete incompleteness? So, this is the uh, 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 quote from Harvey Friedman. He said that. He said that the long range impact and the significance of ongoing investigation in foundation of mathematicals is going to be dependent greatly on the context to which the incomplete phenomena touch normal concrete the mathematicals. In fact, after Goddard, people have found many uh, concrete uh, independent sentences uh, for PA. So uh, here's a list uh, from different authors. Uh, this part is just a single statement. All of them are. Uh, from the uh, um, number theory or com combinatorics uh, in classical mathematicals, all of them are true, but independent, uh, but independent from PA. And uh, this two is just uh, a summary. So they are very variant of uh, uh, example. And uh, Harry Friedman is an uh, uh, expert in, in this field. And uh, he, he, he uh, proposed many examples of concrete incomplete of PA in, in his book, uh, Boer Relation Theory and Incompleteness. Uh, now, look at the property of these mathematical examples. Uh, many of these natural independent examples uh, with real mathematical contents are, in fact, a provable equivalent in PA to a certain meta mathematical sentence. So, this is very interesting. Uh, this uh, sentence is, is not related to uh, arithmetic probability predicate, but in fact, they are equivalent to some uh, meta mathematical sentence. Uh, now, I, I let this one denote you know, the sentence with the uh, reflection principle for sigma one sentence. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, the, or the sigma one sentence provable in PA is true. Uh, this is the formalized version of this the statement I just mentioned. And the people have shown that many of the above independent principle uh, is, is equivalent to this uh, re reflection principle for sigma one sentence. Also, uh, many of these uh, independent principles uh, are provable in some fragment of a second order arithmetic, but uh, they are more complex than good order sentence. A uh, good order sentence is equivalent to consistent of PA in PA, but uh, many of these principles are not only uh, independent of PA, but also independent of PA plus consistent of PA. Uh, here, I write down many of this example. I, I don't know whether all this example. I only know that from the literature, all these uh, examples uh, have this property. Uh, but I'm not sure whether all this example from uh, the last two author also has this property. So I, I don't know. So I just write many. I, I, I didn't write all. Okay. Uh, I'll talk about the concrete increase for PA. So naturally, we can ask the Concrete increase for higher order arithmetic. Could we find the mathematical theorem expressible in second order arithmetic but not provable in, in SOA? In fact, Harry Friedman has found many examples of concrete incompleteness of a different fragment of ZFC. Okay, see his book. Uh, uh, in, in this book, uh, we found a concrete mathematical theorem which, which is expressible in SOA but not provable in second order arithmetic, also not provable in uh, third order. Order arithmetic, but it's provable in first order arithmetic. So the minimal system of a higher order arithmetic to produce a concrete mathematical statement is spreadable in SOA is the first order arithmetic. Okay, now I talk about the different proof of the uh, incompleteness. People have found many uh, different proof after uh, after uh, Gooder. So here is a summary of the different proof. Uh, we have proved the procedural method and approved the recursion theoretical method, proof from model uh, theoretical method, and proof from arithmetization, where the diagonalization lemma, the logical paradox, uh, constructive me method, 
and prove only assuming that the base zero is consistent. And uh, we prove by showing that uh, uh, some uh, statement is independent uh, with real mathematical content. Uh, uh, for giving a proof, uh, this proof may have the zero property of these. For example, a proof may be uh, used both the model zero and also maybe use some diagonalization label. So this property are not, uh, uh, are not uh, exclusive. Now let's look at the, the characteristic of Goodrich proof. Uh, Goodrich just used the procedural uh, method, and he used arithmetization. He, uh, he his proof uh, does not directly use diagonalization label. His proof is based on the lab paradox. Uh, his proof is constructive, and he, he assumes that the base theorem is omega consistent, uh, not uh, assuming that it's consistent. And the Goodrich theorem has no real mathematical content. A uh, history uh, summary of the incompleteness uh, and uh, logical paradox. Uh, Goddard will say that uh, any epistemological atomony atim can be used uh, for a similar proof of the independence. A uh, history summary uh, that a different proof of incomplete theorem of the paradox and from different authors. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I will talk about the generalization of Goddard's theorems. Okay, first I'll give some definitions. Uh, first, T be a consistent extension of Q. We see that T is a sigma zero definable. Uh, this standard is something that uh, uh, the set of the number of sets of T is definable uh, in the standard model by some sigma, sigma n formula. We see that T is sigma n standard, just mean that uh, uh, all sigma n sentence provable in T is uh, true in the standard model. And uh, T is a sigma n consistent. Uh, this is the notion is just uh, uh, a generalization of the one consistent, or, or just uh, uh, the different level of the notion of omega consistence. You see that uh, for any sigma n formula, a phi, suppose phi is written in this form, and so this theta is a pi n one a formula. Uh, then uh, if T can prove that uh, uh, for any n, uh, T can prove that the uh, negation theta n bar, and then T cannot prove theta. Uh, T cannot prove phi. Uh, we see that T is the part and decisive. This means that uh, uh, for any part and sentence phi, either phi is provable in T or phi phi is provable in T. So we see that T is not a part and decisive. Just means that uh, there is a part and sentence phi which is independent of T. Uh, as this notion uh, is a standard. And uh, uh, G1 can be uh, generalized. Uh, uh, for this notion of sigma n sentences and uh, sigma n consistent from different authors, uh, we know that uh, uh, Goodall theorem tells that uh, if t is a sigma one definable and consistent, and t is not a power one complete, uh, and if t is a sigma one definable and the sigma one standard, then t is not a power one uh, decisive. Uh, this one corresponds to the Rosser zero. Is that if T is sigma one definable and consistent, and T is not a power one decisive, and the following uh, two zeros generalize the G one from sigma one definable zero to our arithmetic definable zero, is better to the sigma n plus one definable zero. Uh, so uh, I will not repeat. Okay, you can see that uh, it just uh, this is one sigma one uh, replace sigma one to sigma n plus one, and. Uh, this is the sigma one sound, this is sigma n plus one sound. And this one corresponds to the generalization of Rosser zero. Uh, so this is uh, uh, sigma one definable and the sigma zero, uh, sigma zero sound. So this is the sigma n plus one definable, uh, sigma n sound. And uh, this zero, due to this also, uh, 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 generalized G1 use uh, sigma n consistence. This is use sigma n sound. And uh, uh, sigma n sound is is stronger than sigma n consistence. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now I want to talk about the generalization of G1 uh, of good theorem to uh, sub subsystem of PA. So I need to introduce the notion of interpretation. Uh, interpretability uh, is a powerful method to uh, measure the strength of different theorem in different language. And the interpretation of theorem T is just a mapping of formula of T to formula A such that uh, our accents of T is provable in the A. So I use this uh, symbol to know that S is interpretable in T. And this one to know that S interpretable in T, but T not, not interpretable in S. This means that S is weaker than T with respect to interpretation. Okay. A mutual interpretable just that they are interpretable in each other. 
uh, this is a focal node, uh, very important fact. You see that uh, for serum with a finite signature, if S is essentially understandable and uh, S is interpretable in T, then S is then T is also essentially understandable. Uh, in the following, I will work in serial with a finite signature. Okay. In fact, uh, if we work in, in finite signature, this important fact does does not hold. Okay, this is the precise notion of interpretation. And uh, uh, anyway, I would like to skip it. Uh, uh, I, I have talked about the is intuitive uh, uh, meaning of this notion. Okay, uh, if, uh, in fact, this is the standard in the literature, and the this definition only describe only one dimensional parallel free and the one piece translation. Oh. Okay, now I will talk about the generalization of G1 to uh, to weak arithmetic. Okay, uh, we know that uh, there exists a consistent RE weak subzero of PA. For example, Robin's arithmetic Q, such that uh, for any RE zero S, if uh, T is uh, interpretable in S, then S is incomplete. Uh, so based on this fact, I want to generalize G1 to weak arithmetic. So I introduced the notion G1 hold for T, okay? We see that G1 hold for RE zero T just means that for any consistent RE zero, uh, S. If T is interpretable in S, then S is incomplete. Uh, it's an important uh, uh, fact that uh, we can show that G1 hold for T, if only if T is, is essentially incomplete and the T is essentially undesirable, just means that any uh, consistent R extension of T is undesirable. Okay, so remember this is when G hold for T, uh, if only if T is essentially incomplete and essentially undesirable. Uh, now, I just want to give an overview of the, some example of the weak uh, arithmetic uh, such that uh, G1 hold for Zin. So this slide is just some um, definition of this system. So I'm going to skip. Uh, we don't need to look at the, the detail. We just know, uh, I just give some definitions. Okay, this is the summary. Uh, we have the following picture. Uh, you see that uh, this is uh, stronger and stronger with with respect to interpretation, and G1 hold for all of them since Q is essentially incomplete. Also, uh, this theorem I introduced in the previous slide are all mutably interpretable uh, with Q, and so G1 hold for them. Uh, uh, the Q is weaker than I is weaker than Q, uh, and the G1 hold for all of them. In fact, uh, uh, this is just a very small picture. Um, in fact, uh, in my paper, I can find uh, the whole pic uh, more. Uh, more detailed picture of, of this weak uh, arithmetic, so is that a G1 hold for Zen. Okay, now I just give a, a, big, a big overview of the generalization of G2. Uh, this is the famous level theorem. We can uh, view it as a generalization of G1 and G2. Uh, suppose, uh, yes, PRTS is a standard probability predicate. Then for any sentence phi, if, if this one is proven in T and the phi is proven in T. Uh, uh, we assume that uh, uh, T is true in the standard mode arithmetic. Then we can show that uh, this statement is true in the standard mode or arithmetic. So uh, for any phi, if a phi is not approval in T, then this statement is, is a true statement, but it's not approval in T. So we can give many instances of the G1. Also, if we like the uh, phi to be the zero, not equal to zero, and since T not approval, um, uh, T cannot prove that uh, uh, zero not equal to zero, and so we can uh, prove that the T cannot prove the consistent of T. So we can see it's a generalization of G2. Uh, similar of G1, G2 can be generalized to some arithmetic definable zero. Also, it can be generalized to some weak arithmetic where the notion of interpretation. For example, uh, Polak proved this important zero. It uh, proved that there is no consistent R zero is such that uh, uh, Q plus consistent of, of S is interpretable in S. Uh, an easy clarity of this is that uh, we, can, we know that G2 holds for any consistent RE zero that interprets Q. But it's not true that uh, G2 holds for any consistent RE zero that interprets R. So there's a difference. Now let's look at the status of uh, G2. In fact, G1 and G2 are of a rather different nature and scope. And uh, both uh, mathematically and uh, philosophically, G2 is the more problematic than G1. In case of G1, we are mainly interested in the fact that some the sentence is independent of PA because G1 just says that the theorem is incomplete. It's incomplete. So we only need to find some sentence is independent of the base theorem is okay. 
we don't need to concern about the content of this sentence, whether it uh, expressed uh, uh, something like the PA cannot prove this sentence itself. Okay. Uh, so we can see that the G1 is extensional in the sense that uh, we can construct a concrete independent mathematical statement without referring to arithmetization and the probability predicate. Okay. Now uh, we see that the G2 holds for T uh, if the consistent statement of T is not provable in T. Uh, G2 is essentially different from G1 due to the intentionality problem. Uh, this means that whether G2 holds for T depends on how we formulate the consistent statement. So this is the big problem. Uh, in the following uh, discussion of the in intentionality of G2, we assume the following. We assume that T is a consistent R extension of Q and the canonical number we use is Gordon's numbering and the probability predicate we use is standard. Then we use this canonical arithmetic formula to express the consistent of G, uh, just this one. Uh, um, and the formula uh, rep representing the set of action of the base zero is a sigma one. Also, we also the logic we work on is a classical first order logic. Okay, uh, uh, from the literature, we claim that whether G2 hold for serum T depends on the following factors. The choice of the base theorem, the choice of the numbering, the choice of the probability predicate, the choice of, of an arithmetic formula to express consistence, the choice of a formula numbering or, or representing the action set of the base theorem and the choice of a logic we use. Uh, uh, from the literature, we know that uh, it's dependent on the these five factors. This one I add, but I'm not sure. So to be confirmed, I see some um, preprint, uh, it claims that uh, uh, G2 does not hold in some no classical logic, uh, but uh, not, not yet published, so uh, to be confirmed. Uh, uh, important remark, uh, these factors are not independent and a choice made at an earlier stage may have effect on the choice at a later stage. In the following, uh, unless that otherwise, uh, when we discuss how G2 depends on one factor, I always assume that uh, other factors are fixed and only the factor we are discussing is varied. So this is very important. For example, when we are discussing the, uh, uh, the four, I mean that uh, I see that the G, whether G2 hold depends on the factor four. This means that we also all other factors are faced, but only contain, consider the effort of the factor four. Okay, uh, now get, uh, due to the time limit, I can only have time for a very brief uh, sketch uh, for, for, for this one. Uh, uh, first, uh, it depends on the best theory. If the best theory does not control allow inferring or arithmetic, then G2 may fail. For example, Dan Villard had constructed some example of arithmetic theorem, but it cannot prove that the successor function is total. And for this zero, G2 fails. Also for the Pakumov, he, uh, he defined a weak set zero and uh, G2 fails for this zero. But this zero is, uh, has, has the same degree as the Robinson R. Uh, for Gooder's uh, numbering, uh, we, can, we know that uh, the Gooder number of axon P is recursive. Uh, and uh, um, uh, this author here, uh, sorry, I, I'm, anyway, I'm not sure about my pronunciation. So <clears throat> uh, we see that uh, an injective function gamma from the uh, LPA formulas to N as uh, a numbering. And then he defines, uh, he defines this notion of numbering. And he showed that. Uh, and he defined a notion of acceptable numbering. And he showed that G2 hold for uh, acceptable numbering, but a field for some no acceptable numbering. Okay, now G2 depends on the uh, definition of probability predicate. Uh, we know that G2 hold for any standard uh, probability predicate, but G2 may not hold for some no standard probability predicate. So uh, the well known uh, no standard predicate is the Rosa probability predicate. So G2 field for Rosa probability predicate. This means that uh, uh, this consistent and the reformulated where the Rosa probability is, is provable in T. So this means that uh, uh, contradiction is not provable where this Rosa probability predicate. Now we talk about the, the G2 depends on the choice of the formula to express consistent. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, 
So the uh, uh, RGMO uh, he argues that uh, in uh, Goodall's consistent program, the or original formulation of consistence uh, is about the finite sequence of formulas, not about the arithmetization proof uh, codes and the internalized the quantifiers. So he concluded that G2 does not exclude finitely consistent proof of the original formulation of consistence. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, maybe he will talk about this uh, this afternoon. Uh, uh, but usually we just use some arithmetic formula to express consistent. For example, uh, there are three ways to express the consistence. This one, there's a formula which is not provable. It means that uh, there's a formula, if x is provable, then negation of x is not provable. Uh, we know that uh, this one implies the second one, and the second one implies the last one. Okay. Uh, we have introduced the Hilbert the Bernard's Lobos derivative condition. Uh, this, uh, uh, this derivative condition is sufficient to show that uh, uh, this statement is not provable in T. Also, this consistent is not provable in T. But it's not sufficient to show that uh, this consistent is not provable in T. Okay. Uh, here's another derivative condition due to Hilbert the bonus without the loop. Uh, just this one. Uh, we don't need to do, look at the details. Uh, this condition is starting to show that uh, this consistent is not proven T. Uh, but, but it's not starting to show that uh, this consistent is not proven in T. And uh, the question missing is that uh, whether this help the bearness divide condition is sufficient to show that uh, this consistent statement is not proven in T. And the task uh, um, Kohlhaas and he construct a rosal probability predicate satisfying at least uh, here for the Bernard's derivative condition, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, but uh, but but but, uh, but uh, this consistent statement is not approvable in T. Okay, so and now uh, now I give a general definition of probability predicate. Uh, very some formula. Uh, this is uh, simple. It just see that uh, one is a good number of a proof of the formula with good number x uh, with from the actions said satisfying this formula. And similarly, we can define the probability predicate and, uh, and the formula the consistent statement. And we said the formula is in the numeration of t, just mean that uh, for any then, uh, or for n by approval in p, just if only if n is the good number of some sentence of t. And uh, uh, with the G2 holds depend on the numeration of the base theorems. Uh, and the good shows that uh, uh, if the upper is, is any same one numeration of t, and then this consistent statement is not proven in t. But, uh, uh, G2 may, may be filled for, for some uh, other enumeration with different complex, complexity. For example, Fifferman showed that uh, the power enumeration of a PA such that uh, G2 fails for PA. This consistent statement is provable in PA. Okay, now, uh, and, uh, finally, uh, I want to talk about that, uh, uh, the limit of uh, uh, applicability of, uh, uh, of G1. I try to finish in 15 minutes. And, uh, <clears throat> Okay, first, uh, uh, whether a theorem is uh, complete uh, depends on the language. Okay, this is very known, so I will be, uh, uh, I will skip. Uh, recall that we, we know that G1 holds for some arithmetically definable extension of Q, but it's not true that uh, uh, G1 holds for any arithmetically definable extension of Q. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, some arithmetically definable extension uh, of Q is complete. Okay, uh, <coughs> now, uh, let's, let's look at uh, the weak series in PA. We know that G1 holds for many weak series in PA. So a natural question that uh, uh, we know that uh, G1 holds for R. So natural question is that we, whether we can find a series is that G1 holds for S and S is uh, weaker than R. Uh, for this, we introduce a notion of recursively inseparable pair. Uh, it's just the disjunct R is said such that uh, there is no recursive set X such that X separate S and T. And uh, <clears throat> The good news that we can show that uh, for any recursive inseparable pair AB, we can find a zero uh, UAB such that uh, G1 holds for this zero and, th and this zero is weaker than R uh, respect to interpretation. Uh, we know that uh, there are continuum many <coughs> recursive inseparable ins pair. So we have continuum many uh, instances such that uh, G1 holds for it and uh, is weaker than R. Uh, so now we first ask the big question. <clears throat> in fact, in Monday's uh, <coughs> lecture by Harry Friedman, he also uh, talked about this question. This is that uh, whether there is a minimal or 
<clears throat> a minimum are you zero in some sense uh, uh for which g1 holds uh we know that uh, when we talk about the uh, minimal or uh, minimal uh we we should uh, uh be clear uh, it is with respect to uh which kind of degree structure so let's first uh, talk about the uh, uh the limit of g1 with respect to the turing uh, uh, turing degree structure <clears throat> Uh, we, we define this uh, this set. It's just the set of zero is such that uh, G1 hold for S and S is weaker than R with respect to Turing degree. So we have this natural uh, question whether this structure is uh, well founded. That means that whether we can find a minimum zero S with respect to Turing degree such that uh, <coughs> G1 hold for S. Uh, and whether any two elements of this structure are comparable, is there is there an infinite descending chain in this structure? And uh, <clears throat> uh, Sean Fair he proved some very useful uh, theorems. And so that uh, for any no recursive I said A, there's a recursive inseparable pair B C such so that A B C has the same degree. And uh, based on this theorem, he proved that uh, for any no recursive I said A, there's a consistent uh, uh, theorem T having only one no logical symbol which is uh, essentially understandable and has a same degree as a so from this strong fair zero we can show that uh, for any Turing degree between zero and zero jump there's a zero use in in this d bar uh, that means that g1 holds for it and it is weaker than r such that this u has a Turing degree d so from this fact we, we can see that uh, this one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, the i degree between zero and zero jump and and let's say the d bar so we conclude that uh, this structure is as complete as the turing degree structure of re set uh so this is a summary of the pro uh, property of this structure uh they just uh, use uh use no fat uh, from recursion saver of the turing degree structure uh, so we just uh, have a quick overview so this draw is not a very founded that's mean that it has no minimal element and it has infinite many incomparable element there are infinite descending chain in this structure also this structure is dense for any two elements we can insert a insert a second a third element <coughs> between a and b and for any a in this d bar there's a b in the bar which is incomparable with a and uh, given any AB in this D bar, we can have the counter many uh, element uh, between this A and B and all these state and are, are incomparable. And in fact, uh, given any AB, any countable partial the outer state can embed it between A and B. Okay, now, uh, so, uh, so uh, about the question about the whether we can find minimal theorem say that G1 holds, if we consider Turing degree, so uh, we have the answer. Now we, con now we consider the uh, interpretation degrees so we define D is the clear of zero is and that G1 holds for S and S is uh, weaker than R. Remember that G1 holds S just means that S is essentially incomplete. So we can ask the same question whether uh, it is uh, well founded, whether any two elements of D are, are uh, uncomparable and uh, is, is any infinite descending chain in this structure. In fact, uh, uh, the inter interpretation degree structure for R is zero extending Robin's ultimate Q is we are now. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the interpretation degree structure for zero extending Q is a uh, is a dense uh, distributed is a dense distributive that matrix. However, however, the interpretation degree structure of I is zero weaker than Robin's theorem R is much more complex. Uh, the, the main property is that uh, we don't know the relationship between that uh, U is interpreted in V and the U is Turing reducible in V. There's no direct relation between this notion, interpretation and the Turing reducibility. So there's a difficulty. Uh, now uh, we introduce a, a notion with that uh, R series U is Turing persistent if only if for any consider R series V. If V extend U and then uh, V compute U. Uh, also canary, we can show that if U is Turing persistent then for any R series V, if uh, if U is interpretable in V and uh, and and uh, V computes U, uh, if V interpreted U and uh, V computes U, okay, and uh, 
and uh, uh, this theorem is based on a strong field, uh, 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 but the uh, uh, essentially improve uh, original uh, strong field theorem. Uh, you see that for any IC A, the disjunct IC the BC, uh, such that BC is reducible in A, and for any IC the D, if D separate B and C, just this means that D include B, but uh, D inter uh, intersect C is empty. Uh, if D separate B and C and D compute A, uh, uh, from this theorem we can show that, uh, and uh, and uh, and strong field theorem and uh, uh, and our stuff we can show that for any i two in degree between zero and zero jump, these are two inconsistent theorem D T with two in degree D such that D T uh, is weaker than R and and G one hold for D T. Uh, so uh, from this theorem we can know that we have a theorem D T with degree D. Uh, but uh, we can show that uh, this theorem is truly persistent. So this is very important. And uh, uh, now uh, I introduce uh, two operations uh, <clears throat> on theorems. Okay, uh, to save time, uh, I only talk about uh, this one. Okay, um, okay. Uh, given theorem A and B, and we define the infimo of A and B is defined as follows. Um, M plus B is a zero. Its signature is just the disjunct sum of the signature of A and B, uh, plus a new zero error predicate symbol P. And uh, the zero of this A joint B uh, uh, is accepted by the following. Uh, if phi is accent of A, and then we have the accent P imply phi. If a precise accent of of B, and then A joint B have the accent negation of P imply plus I. Uh, as keep the definition of a supreme. Uh, uh, we know that uh, the degree of interpretation for a distributive lattice uh, with these two operations. We only need to remember this. Uh, especially, we have a very important fact. Uh, this part is very important uh, for the following uh, uh, conclusions. We can show that uh, for R is zero A and B, uh, if A and B both are essentially undesirable, and the A join B, uh, A plus B is also essentially undesirable. Uh, so this is very, uh, very important. Uh, so from this, we can say that uh, uh, even we consider the degree of interpretability with respect to essentially undesirable theorem, and uh, it's also for a distributive lattice uh, with these two operations. Uh, okay, uh, uh, when you when you to finish. Now I give a summary of the of the structure of, of this one uh, we, 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 we know. Uh, first, uh, there are countably many elements of D which are incompatible under uh, this interpretation. Uh, also, this and descending chain of element of D under this one with countable length. Uh, I believe that we can improve this to continue many element. Uh, Continue many lengths. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the point is that uh, uh, the point is that uh, uh, for any degree, i.e., degree between this one, we have a, a Turing precision zero uh, with the Turing degree d is weaker than r, and uh, it is uh, uh, essentially incomplete. And uh, since so, uh, we consider a countably incomparable Turing degree, and then uh, we consider the consequently corresponding theorems for this incompatible Turing degree. And since these theorems are Turing persistent, and then we can show that uh, these theorems are not uh, are in, are incomparable with respect to interpretation. And then from this, we can construct a descending chain of element of D. And uh, also we can show that uh, if this structure has a, so the, the central question is that whether this structure has a minimal element, but we can show that if it has a minimal element, then it's a minimum. Uh, and it is on a, and it is not a Turing persistent. Uh, so this is uh, essentially use this fact. So if A, B are essentially undesirable, then A plus B is also essentially undesirable. Okay, uh, finally, we can show that uh, uh, this structure has no minimal element if we respect to finally asymptotized zeros. Uh, uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, in, 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 in a paper by Harry Friedman in the 1970s, had a paper about the uh, task easy 
uh, task easy degree, uh, degree. That, that's just uh, the degree strategy of interpretation uh, with respect to finite estimate theory. Uh, based on this argument uh, and, uh, and some paper of, 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 of the visa, we can show that uh, uh, this, this structure has no minimal element uh, if we restrict to finitely axiomatized theorems. Uh, in fact, we show that uh, uh, this structure restrict to finitely axiomatized theorem is a dense distributive lattice. Uh, okay, uh, and finally, uh, remember that uh, uh, we also know that uh, uh, the theorems we are discussing, we are just we, uh, we are just talking about is uh, with the finite uh, signature, and uh, we essentially use this fact uh, just uh, uh, for theorem with finite signature. If S is essentially incomplete and S is interpretable in T, and then T is also essentially complete, uh, but. Uh, uh, this important fact does not hold for infinite signature. Uh, we find that whether this structure has a minimal element depend on the signature of the language. Uh, if the signature of the language is infinite, then it has a minimum, uh, has a minimal element. Uh, in fact, we can show that uh, for any recursively inspired pair uh, xy, with their theorem txy with infinite signature starts at uh, gy holds for zen, and uh, it is a minimum. Uh, that means that it is uh, interpretable in any first order theorem. Uh, we just add a count of many uh, 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 unary uh, predicate symbol, Pn, and then we can uh, construct a, a, a theorem from this, from a given a res recursively inspired pair. And then we can show that uh, uh, it is uh, essentially incomplete and uh, interpret in any first order theorem. So we know that there are continuum many recursively in the pair. So we have uh, continually many uh, minimal element uh, for the infinite signature. Uh, so uh, from this, we saw that uh, if without further restrictions, the notion of interpretation is not a good notion for comparing essentially incomplete theorems. Since an essentially incomplete theorem may be interpretable in a desirable theorem for infinite signature. Uh, so uh, this lesson I learned from this. So uh, <laughs> uh, because I want to <laughs> explore the limit of GY, but uh, uh, we, we know that uh, GY holds for, for T, I mean that T is essentially undesirable, but, uh, uh, but we find that uh, uh, the notion of interpretation is not a good one for comparing essentially incomplete theorems. Okay, uh, here is the uh, uh, a summary, okay, about uh, uh, the central question, uh, central question we are examining is the whether this structure has a minimal element. Uh, for me, the difficulty of this question is related to the following factor. First, whether the signature is infinite. If the signature is infinite, and we know the answer, there are continual many uh, minimal element of this structure. Okay, now, uh, now we only uh, consider finite signature. Uh, but uh, for finite signature, the difficulty of this question uh, is, related to, is related to the complexity of the signature. For example, uh, for finite signature, then we, we can ask the, how, how complex is this finite signature. For example, if we only consider uh, the signature with only one binary uh, predicate symbol, then definitely this question is uh, <laughs> should be simple. Then the general question of uh, whether uh, uh, there is a minimum RE theorem such that G1 holds. Okay. Also, uh, the difficulty of this question is related to the class of theorem that we consider. And we have shown this. For example, if we respect to the structure to find an axiomatic theorem, and we know that uh, it has no minimal element. Uh, because uh, this structure with two finite estimate theorem is dense, we can find a uh, we, weaker, weaker in the theorems, which is essentially incomplete. Okay, uh, finally, uh, we found that had, uh, the difficulty of this question is related to uh, the notion of interpretation we use. Um, in our talk, uh, we only use uh, a, a classical a notion of interpretation. It is one dimensional one piece without a parameter uh, interpretation. In fact, uh, uh, in the literature, some more general version of uh, interpretation was uh, 
uh, proposed, uh, especially by Abdelvizo, uh, for, for the definition of multiple uh, dimensional piecewise interpolation with parameter, we can re refer to uh, uh, the paper in the literature. Yeah, uh, so it's in that if we just restrict to, to the classical notion of interpolation, uh, the question is uh, more difficult than we use some general notion of interpolation. Uh, because uh, um, uh, for question about interpolation, sometimes uh, in order to get a nicer result, uh, we use some uh, we use some uh, general version of the notion of interpretation. Okay, uh, but uh, it is still possible that uh, maybe we have a uniform answer uh, for the question that uh, whether this structure has uh, has a minimal element. Uh, okay, I think. Uh, uh, I just uh, I use my time, and uh, uh, finally, uh, this some refer uh, reference list is just based on um, my book or my paper, and uh, many material are just uh, from uh, one manuscript I'm just working on. Uh, okay, that's all for my uh, for my talk, and uh, thank you for for your attention.